guys, how are you today? I hope you're having a really good start to your week so far. Welcome to another Learn With Me video where we will discover new tips and tricks for the violin together. If you're new to my channel, let me introduce myself real quick. My name is Sumina, I'm a violinist and I like to make videos and talk to people on the internet. Um, yeah, exactly what my parents told me not to do. Welcome to the fam. <laughs> Sometimes I get asked how I look relaxed while I play. People tell me, you know, it seems like you're not tense at all when you perform. And I can tell you, a lot of it has to do with a healthy posture, um, which makes me seem composed. Not only that, but having a relaxed posture actually helps you mentally when performing. Sort of tricking your mind into thinking that you're actually relaxed, it has a lot to do with feeling physically relaxed to feel relaxed up here as well. But that's for another video. I couldn't be more thankful for my first violin teacher of 10 years, Simon Skraken, who really drummed into me how important it is to have a natural, healthy and relaxed posture. She really made that a priority in my instrumental education. So today I'll be sharing with you some tips that I have either grown up with or have picked up along the way. So as always, if you like today's video and feel like you learned something new today, please be sure to hit that like button. <laughs> All right, let's dive right in. There are two factors when it comes to a healthy posture when you play the violin. You can either adjust your surroundings for the ideal posture or you can be mindful about your own physical posture. The second one actually needs a little bit more discipline to constantly think about. Notice how I say adjust your surroundings and be mindful of your body, not adjust your body for your surroundings, okay? This is super, super important. In order for us to understand and act on the healthiest violin posture, we have to understand that our body shouldn't have to twist and turn so we can enjoy playing the violin. To play the violin, you already sort of have to rotate your arms and stuff like that. So we want to keep those twists as minimal as possible. So now, why exactly do we want good posture, right? Reason number one is to prevent injury. I always say that health is the top priority in your life. For our physical health, in order to achieve and maintain that to the best of our abilities, we need to have good posture because Sometimes we practice 40 hours a day. The second reason, which is also very important, is to be limitless. Let me explain what I mean by that. Having good posture will make you more relaxed and therefore open a whole world of possibilities in terms of your bow techniques as well as feeling more mobile in the left side of your body. If we're physically relaxed, we are more adaptable in creating our music than if we have stiff shoulders or crampy hands. If we're too inflexible, it can hold us back, sort of like with Olympic gymnasts. Now, we often think that the more we practice, the more of a guarantee we have that we can master certain techniques. What we often don't put in the equation are the factors that hold us back and stunt our growth and slow down our progress. Feeling tense is one of those things. Also, I don't know about you, but I'm sort of lazy and I don't want to practice more in order to achieve something. So feeling relaxed is sort of a top priority for me. If you feel pain of any sorts, it's your body's way of telling you that something isn't quite right. So listen to your body, that's all I can say. Today we're going to be talking about changes that you can do um, that are the easiest and then go gradually into the more difficult ones. First things first correctly adjusting your music stand. It sounds so simple, yet we overlook it all the time. Literally, we overlook it. I can't stress enough how a correctly adjusted music stand prevents a lot of unnecessary tension in the back of your neck. In order to achieve a straight spine, like my friend Elton back there, you guys named him, <laughs> thank you for the suggestions. In order to achieve that, making your music stand taller is the easiest fix out there. As a rule of thumb, your music stand should be on eye height, especially if you are under the age of 11 or 12. And sometimes music stands are actually not quite tall enough. So what I like to do is to put the music stand on top of a chair and adjust it that way. Remember, we want to adapt our surroundings, not bend over and hunch over just so we can read the music properly. Next up on our list are our violin adjustments. What I mean by that is the chin rest, the shoulder rest, and of course you have to play a violin that is fit for your size. Going to the music shop and trying out different chin rests and different shoulder rests is super important because we all have different neck lengths and boniness or meatiness, right? The options are endless and you need to find the setup that best fits your body. For example, I have a giraffe neck, 
So conventional shoulder rests actually were too short for me, even if I maxed it out. What I had to get my hands on are extra long shoulder rest legs. That actually made sure that I didn't have to compensate and contract unnaturally, which prevented me from a lot of neck and shoulder tension. By the way, if you have a flamingo neck like me, be sure to check out the description down below. I put a link to the extra long shoulder rest legs down there. Be sure to go on the hunt on the perfect violin setup. Now you might think, Sumina, how do I know if this setup is perfect for me? All I can say to that is symmetry, as much as you can. Your shoulders shouldn't hike up, your head shouldn't have to almost break off your neck from trying to keep the violin in place. Your feet should be planted into the floor about hip wide and your body shouldn't feel like it has to twist towards the violin. Those shoulder rests and chin rests are invented so that you don't have to adjust towards your violin unnaturally anymore. Once you have found that base posture of symmetry, you'll need to feel just as relaxed in the first position on the violin as well as the highest positions. That's how you know if your adjustments are just right. Listen to your body. So as I said before, I'm making this list from easiest adjustment to the most difficult adjustment. The third adjustment is probably the most difficult in my opinion because it's about being aware and reminding yourself about your posture. And you might say, standing on my two legs is not that difficult. Why do I have to remind myself of that? You'd be surprised because after two minutes of practicing and thinking about the correct bowing, the correct fingering, intonation, quality sound, phrasing, dynamics, all of those different things, it's a little hard for your body to remind itself and be aware of the correct bass posture because it's used to being carried away by the music and think about other things first. So before you even play your morning scales, take just one minute to go through a checklist. Your feet are about hip wide apart, your heels are deep in the floor, your shoulders are symmetrical and relaxed, your head only minimally tilts over to keep the violin in place, and your spine is straight. Scales are great for a lot of things, such as intonation and bow control and sound quality, but scales are also so useful because you can really mindfully work on your healthy posture while playing actual notes. Going back to basics, on that note, a few things on theoretical stuff. So when I first went to study in Berlin for my bachelor's degree, um, there was this one class that I sort of briefly heard of called Alexander Technique. If you're unfamiliar with Alexander Technique, it's basically the studies of an ideal posture and a lot of musicians integrate Alexander Technique into their lives. It's actually also considered the musician's posture. Ever since that class at Hans Eisler in Berlin, um, I've integrated Alexander Technique philosophies and practices into my daily life. I actually recommend this book, and I've also linked it down below in the description for you to check out. It's specifically Alexander Technique for musicians, and it's really eye-opening actually. Another source for you to educate yourself about posture is fit as a fiddle, because fit as a fiddle is sort of like an educational philosophy for violinists and posture health and it is a collaboration of violinist Pamela Frank who is an incredible musician, so listen to her Beethoven sonatas with her dad, as well as physical therapist Howard Nelson. So actually the first time that I went to a fit as a fiddle workshop was in New Zealand but then also um, at a music festival here in Switzerland. I've linked their website down below as well. It's really a remarkable story because Pamela Frank had a huge concertizing career but due to injuries she had to put the violin on hold for a bit, tried so many treatments and the only thing that really worked was being mindful of adapting your violin and your surroundings to your body rather than the other way. So as I said, I'll link them down below. Please check them out um, just to do a little bit of your own research. So as a closing note, I really want to encourage you that the next time you see your favorite violinist or musician play, why not observe them and learn why exactly they seem so relaxed, even when it's such challenging pieces. You'll maybe see that most artists without a known history of injury tend to have a more relaxed and adaptable bass posture. If you found today's Learn With Me video helpful, please don't forget to hit that like button and maybe you even want to share this video with someone who might benefit from this video with some new knowledge. 
Also, if you have additional tips on how to improve posture and you want to share it with everyone to maybe help as well, be sure to comment it in the comment section down below and we can all help each other out. All right, so thank you so much for watching today's video. Stay tuned for next Monday's video. Um, yeah, I hope you have a really wonderful rest of your day and I'll see you another time. Bye. You guys, let me know if you disagree, but I feel like this last week just took forever to pass. Um, by the way, happy Swiss National Day, August 1st. That was Saturday. I hope you could enjoy your weekend and thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope to see you next week. Bye.